Welcome back, Wildcats. So if you remember, last time we talked about changes in state, and we added heat to ice to change its state from solid to liquid, or ice to water. When we compared the properties of the ice to the properties of the water, we discovered that the state of matter and the temperature definitely changed, but the mass didn't really change. The water was only one gram lighter than the ice was. So now my question to you is what will happen if we cool the water until it's really, really cold? How would the properties of the water change? Well, let's find out. This is the exact same beaker of water that we discussed in the last experiment. So let's go over the properties again. So the temperature of the water is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. The shape is the same as the beaker since liquids take the shape of their containers. The total mass of the beaker of water is 323 grams. And remember the beaker itself had a mass of 157 grams. So the mass of the water is 166 grams. Now we need to find a way to get this water really, really, really cold. So where can I put it to do that? Well, I'm going to put it in the freezer. So I will take it down the hall and meet you there. Okay, I'm going to put our beaker of water right here in the door of the freezer. Now we can't just leave the freezer door open and watch and see what happens. So we'll have to close it and check up on it a little bit later. Okay, we're checking on our beaker. So you see it still has a lot of water in it. There is a little ice that's starting to form on the top. So we will check it again later. Three hours later. It's got a little busy this afternoon, so it's been a while since I've been able to come back and check on our beaker of water. And it looks like it's now completely a beaker of ice. But since it's the end of the day, I am going to put this back in here and I will finish up in the morning and we'll talk about the properties. Early the next morning. Now I've gotten the beaker out of the freezer and as you can see, the water has completely frozen into a block of ice. Um, I am trying to take the temperature of it, but it's really hard because the part of the thermometer that measures the temperature is not able to touch the ice. The temperature has come down a little from what the thermometer was, but I'm not going to be able to get an accurate temperature right now. The freezing point of water is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. So because the ice is in a solid block, we have to assume that it is at least that cold, if not colder. Let's talk about the shape of the ice. So because the ice froze from water that had taken the shape of the container that it was in, the ice is now in a shape, is in the same shape because it just froze from its liquid state. Now, if I could take all the glass off from around it, the ice would would uh, retain this shape. So, you know, it still has the properties of a solid that it will keep its shape. Okay, now we are going to check the mass. So the mass of the beaker of ice is, I'm gonna go over to the 300 because it was over that before, so 310. 320. Well, look at that. It looks like it's completely balanced at 320 grams. If you'll remember, the mass of the beaker itself was 157 grams, and we just determined that the beaker with the ice is 320 grams, so that makes the mass of the ice 163 grams. So if we're comparing the mass of the beaker of, or of the water 
in its liquid form and then the water in its solid form or ice, we can see that the mass is still very similar. Um, it is three grams different. And if you think about grams, it's a paper clip is basically one gram. So it's like it's three paper clips lighter. Um, but essentially the mass is very, very similar. And if we look at the temperature, the water was 78 degrees whenever we first started this. And I went ahead and put the temperature of the ice as 32 degrees since I couldn't take it accurately because of the state that it was in. But now you see that even though we went from the liquid to a solid, the mass was still virtually the same even though the temperature really dropped and the state of matter changed. Hopefully you enjoyed this second part of Changes the State of Matter, and I will see you next time. Bye.